resolution was introduced to the floor of the House of Representatives, calling for an investigative committee to look into whether various members of Congress should be expelled from their office in Congress in connection with the January 6th Capitol riot. Also, a complaint has been submitted in the Senate requesting an investigation specifically of Senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley for the same. Can members of Congress really be expelled? If so, how does that work? Has anyone been expelled before? Keep watching to learn more. Coming up on Legal Bites. Hey everyone, welcome to Legal Bites. I'm Alita, I'm a lawyer, and on this channel, we explain the law one bite at a time. It was a while ago now, but as I'm sure you know, on January 6th, 2021, we saw probably one of the most concerning, if not frightening, days in recent American political history, when Trump supporters at a protest turned riot started storming the Capitol building in Washington, DC. At the time of the protest turned riot, members of Congress were voting on the certification of the 2020 presidential election results. We've covered the electoral process in multiple videos before. If you haven't seen them and you don't know how the Electoral College works, I'll link to them in the description below. Part of these videos are admittedly a little outdated now, given that the votes were ultimately certified and we now have a new president sworn into office. But if you do want to see an overview of the process and some of the history behind it, the basics of the videos will still be relevant for elections to come in the absence of some sort of change in the law. And as a note, just like in the previous election videos we did, I understand that these topics can turn partisan very quickly. Just like anybody else, I have my own personal thoughts on politics, but this video is not about those thoughts. This video is to give an explanation from the law that's as middle of the road as I can possibly give. So hopefully we can meet that expectation. And if you think we did, go ahead and give this video a like. Anyway, as we know, on January 6, 2020, members of Congress were evacuated because of the riot before it was ultimately put down. Once everything was secured again, Congress came back in to debate and vote on certification of the election results. To the consternation of Democrats, 147 Republican members of Congress actually voted against certifying the results, citing their concerns over voter fraud in the various battleground states. Even still, those 147 votes were not enough to throw out electoral votes for those states, and so the election did not proceed to a contingent election. And on January 20th, 2021, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were sworn into office. Now, in the time between January 6th and January 20th, many Democrat voices started to call for not just impeachment of then President Donald Trump, but also the expulsion of various members of Congress. President Trump was impeached by the House for a historic second time, and now the Senate is holding a second impeachment trial and will vote on whether or not to convict Trump. Hey. Aside from the impeachment issue, a resolution was also introduced in the House of Representatives, which at the time of this video is being filmed, hasn't been voted on. The resolution calls for a formation of an investigative subcommittee in the House Ethics Committee. The purpose of the subcommittee is to investigate whether certain members of Congress violated their oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, etc. At the same time, on January 21st, 2021, a complaint was submitted in the Senate requesting the investigation of Senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley specifically for their actions leading up to and around January 6th. Ultimately, what both the House resolution and the Senate complaint appear to be looking for is to expel a number of Republican members of Congress. It seems there are three possible groups of congressional actors that are being looked at. Those who were loud voices in the movement questioning the election results leading up to January 6th, those who spoke at the rally on January 6th, and those who ultimately voted to reject certification of the electoral votes cast in Biden's favor after the riot took place. So can members of Congress be expelled from office? In short, yes absolutely they can be expelled. Historically, it's been exceptionally rare, which is why you might not have even known that it was something that could be done in the first place. Under normal circumstances, members of Congress are re-elected every two years in the case of House Representatives and every six years for Senators. They're part of a three-branch system of governance. The other two, of course, are the judiciary and the executive branches. But of the three branches, the Constitution gives Congress, the legislative branch, the most power, and that's precisely because they're held directly accountable to their constituents. However, there are actually three main ways that each of the two chambers of Congress can punish one of its members. Cat, shush. Hey, quiet. Those are reprimands, censure, and expulsion. The ability to punish a member of Congress comes from Article 1, Section 5 of the US Constitution. 
clause two of that section specifically says that each house may determine the rules of its proceedings, punish its members for disorderly conduct, and with the concurrence of two thirds, expel a member. In other words, the Senate has the power to punish senators and the House of Representatives has the power to punish and even expel its representatives. Note that each chamber separately decides the fate of its members. The first two types of punishment, reprimand and censure, only need a majority of votes in order to punish the Congress member. Out of the three, a reprimand is the least serious form of punishment. It can be as simple as a public statement that serves as a slap on the wrist, or to basically make a statement that the House or the Senate does not approve of the Congress member's behavior. Censure is more serious than a reprimand. It often coincides with pulling the member off of any committees he or she may be sitting on. This can be a big blow to the member because seats on committees can confer a lot of influence and power, and some committee seats are more powerful than others. Then finally, expulsion is far and away the most serious out of the three because it actually removes the member of Congress from office altogether. So how do these punishments work? Well, all three of them usually start with a resolution that gets introduced into the chamber where the member in question holds office. The resolution usually calls for the reprimand, censure, or expulsion of the member. If the member is a senator, the resolution is introduced in the Senate. Likewise, if the member is a representative in the House, the resolution is introduced in the House. A resolution like this in the Senate gets referred to the Senate Committee on Ethics, and a resolution in the House would be referred to the Committee on Standards of Official Conduct. If it seeks an investigation, then the committee to which the resolution was referred will create an investigative subcommittee. That subcommittee will gather evidence, they'll talk to witnesses, and ultimately the subcommittee will hold an adjudicatory hearing before they vote on whether the member is found to have committed the specific actions. After that vote, the subcommittee then votes on recommendations to make to the general chamber overall. If an expulsion is recommended, the subcommittee's report will be referred to the full House of Representatives or to the Senate, where members of the chamber will vote to accept, reject, or alter the report's recommendation. Expulsion requires not a simple majority, but a much higher hurdle of two thirds of the members of that chamber voting in favor of expulsion. To illustrate, in the House right now, there are 211 Republicans and 221 Democrats. And at the time of filming this, there are currently three vacancies. So two thirds means 288 House representatives would need to vote to expel. To do that, Democrats would need to convince 77 Republicans to expel their fellow Congress members. Similarly, in the Senate, there are 50 Democrat senators and 50 Republican senators, which means that in order to reach two thirds of the Senate or 66 senators, Democrats would need to convince 16 Republican senators to expel. Considering the numbers, it's entirely possible that these movements to expel members of Congress are being pursued less because they're likely to succeed and maybe more to... <laughs> make a statement. So let's look to history to see what has happened with congressional expulsions in the past. Obviously, the past doesn't always determine what will happen in the future, but it's helpful to see the kinds of behaviors that Congress has in the past decided were bad enough that the member should be expelled. In the entire history of the United States, 20 members of Congress have been expelled. 15 of those were senators and five were representatives in the House. Of those 20, 17 were expelled for supporting Southern secession from the Union during the Civil War in 1861 and 1862, either by offering aid to the Confederacy or by simply leaving their seats in Congress after their state seceded. 14 of those were senators and the other three were House representatives. Since then, no other senator has been expelled, not even Senator Joe McCarthy, who was known for his leadership of McCarthyism and the Red Scare of the 1950s. The only other senator expelled outside of the Civil War was actually before the Civil War in 1797. His name was William Blount, and he was a member of the South Carolina delegation to the Constitutional Convention in 1787. Well, I guess that's the definition of the word irony. He later became Senator William Blount as a Democratic Republican of Tennessee and was expelled for treason a year after he was selected as one of Tennessee's initial U.S. Senators. He apparently was in financial straits after making a number of risky purchases speculating on land. So when it looked like the Spanish-controlled area of Louisiana could potentially see an ownership change, Senator Blount apparently conspired with the British to seize the land with the hopes that land prices would get a nice boost. It didn't work out, and he was eventually expelled from Congress for the whole affair. Aside from that, the other two members of Congress to be expelled were in the House of Representatives. 
In 1980, Representative Michael Myers, a Democrat from Pennsylvania, was expelled after he was convicted of bribery. And in 2002, the only member of Congress to be formally expelled in the last 40 years was Representative Jim Traficant, a Democrat from Ohio. He was expelled after he was convicted of 10 different counts that included bribery, racketeering, and tax evasion. There have been other initiations of actions to expel members of Congress, and actually a handful of members of Congress have resigned when it became clear when they were about to be expelled. Almost every single one of those cases was a situation where the Congress member was convicted of a crime involving a bribery, campaign finance laws, receiving compensation to intervene with a federal agency, or things like gross sexual misconduct. Considering all of that, I don't know whether the members of Congress sitting in the hot seat since the January 6th riot will be expelled. But as I said earlier, given the numbers that are required in order to expel a member of Congress, I think it maybe is a little bit less likely. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Like I mentioned before, it seems like there are two or three possible groups of Congress members that are being looked at right now. There are the likes of Senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, who became leading voices and who for months questioned the results of the 2020 election. Then there are people like Representative Mo Brooks of Alabama, who also was a loud voice in that campaign and who addressed the protesters in a speech before the rally moved to the steps of the Capitol and became a riot. Now our ancestors sacrificed their blood, their sweat, their tears, their fortunes, and sometimes their lives to give us, their descendants, an America that is the greatest nation in world history. So I have a question for you. Are you willing to do the same? Then there are the Congress members who maybe didn't participate in any of that, but voted not to certify the electoral votes from various states in an effort to proceed to a contingent election. But what do you guys think? Based on what you understand now about congressional expulsions, should any of these members of Congress be expelled, or should it be left up to their constituents in their next elections? Let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you found this interesting and informative, and if you did, we'd love it if you'd hit the like button, because it really does help us with the YouTube algorithm gods. Connect four. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the notification bell. We generally upload videos every week talking about some kind of deep dive in the law, and our videos typically intersect somehow with pop culture or current events. And sometimes they include cats. <laughs> so if you like that kind of content, hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell will help you see more content like this. Anyway, see you in the next video.